Hi, hello. So last week The Sims 4 released a new expansion pack, The Sims 4 Cottage Living. I've been playing this game since I was a young child and I've basically wanted farms in my game since I was a young child. So I will be reviewing this pack. Now, I didn't receive early access because I'm not a game changer, but I've been playing this game a lot in the past week and I have some strong opinions to share with you. I've divided up this video into four parts, create a sim to start with, then I move on to the world, build and buy later on, and lastly, we take a look at the gameplay, which I think is what most people are excited for when it comes to this pack. So I've just fired off my game, uh, I've opened create a sim, I've just picked a household, and Don and Dina have decided to move to the countryside, so let's go with what this pack has to offer. There's a couple hairstyles for men, I especially like this one. Always has to be a good Love Island haircut if we do a British pack, obviously. There are two new beards, actually. Um, they're the same beard, one just has a little bit of grey in the beard. There are no new accessories for men, so we've moved on to clothing. Uh, there's actually a good array of clothing for men. Uh, I often find it a bit lacking, so this good amount of clothing for men in this pack is always welcome. Since The Sims University, they've started to get their meshes down, the hair textures are all really good. Some new boots, um, nice rain boots, good pair of wellies, always necessary, so you can't really see it. Yeah, they look really nice. So for women, there's actually even more hairs than for men. Uh, some of these are really, really nice. Controversially, this is probably my favourite hair in the entire pack. It works for children, for elders, for men, for women. It works for everyone. It's a really nice hairstyle. However, in this pack, there are three hairstyles that I have a bit of an issue with. Now, hear me out. I thought in The Sims we did this thing where the hat is separate from the hair and therefore you can pair every hat with every hair. This pack actually comes with three hairstyles that have a hat attached to it, which I think is really a problem. And the first one is this one. And this is such a shame. Don't get me wrong, this hair is lovely. It just doesn't fit every single sim. But it's this fascinator where it's at. I want that fascinator. Imagine your sims going to the horse races or their third dead husband's funeral. The problem now is that this fascinator changes colour depending on the hair colour of your sim, which I think is a real issue because it means that 9 out of 10 times it doesn't match their outfit. And second, I want to be able to wear this with a bob, with a low ponytail, with long wavy hair. I wanted to go with everything. There's a similar hairstyle actually, this one, the Agnes Crumple bottom hat. Not as offended because I don't care for this hat as much, but it's a similar story. And then actually the last one has the opposite problem, which is this one. I think this is a lot of people's favorite hair and I think it's beautiful. I like it with the little head cloth thingy, but I want it without the head cloth. I'll actually show you what the issue is when we move over to the hats. Hats are very similar to the ones that we get for men, but if you put a hat on this hair, she is still wearing this little thing, which I think just looks kind of weird. Now, for the outfits, they all really fit the theme. Um, I like most of the swatches. They're all very cottagecore-like. Some of this is a little bit too cottagecore-y for me that I don't know how often I'll actually use it. Bottoms, um, there's a couple more. Nice new skirt, nice pair of shorts, long skirt. There's a small corsage that comes with this pack. A new pair of gloves, look like gardening gloves, but I think in the right context you can get away with this as outdoor or winter gloves. And lastly, a new pair of socks. For the shoes, women have all the shoes that come for men, but additionally, they have these old lady shoes and a good pair of wedges. Kids have the same hairstyles as adults, nothing new here. They have a couple new outfits that I think are only for kids. Similar story for toddlers, they have the same hairstyles as adults. Uh, some of these are a bit unrealistic in my opinion, but I'm not complaining. I'd rather have too many than too few when it comes to hairstyles. We've got some cute clothing as well, including this nice little backpack. Yeah. There's actually one new lifetime wish. It's in nature and it's called the country caretaker. Um, a lot of it is just socializing with animals and befriending animals. Um, there's two new traits. One is animal enthusiasts. I really like this. It actually unlocks a couple of interactions um, with animals that you wouldn't normally have. The second one I have a bit more of an issue with. The second one is lactose intolerant. I don't think this is a trait. If your sim has only three slots, I'm not going to waste one on being lactose intolerant. I don't think this is a defining trait of someone. Together with vegetarian, this should really be in some sort of dietary section instead of being a separate trait. I'm actually really disappointed that there's new new aspirations for children. Uh, this game's been out for more than seven years and we still only have the four aspirations that we started with for kids that I've now played over a million times. Um, I think they really missed an opportunity here with getting a cute outdoorsy kind of wish for children. 
And I think lastly, they dropped a ball at the likes and dislikes. They really just introduced this new feature, which I think is really cool, gives an additional depth to your game. And I think they could have really easily put in an animal category here um, that they could have even combined with cats and dogs so that you could like cats, like dogs like llamas, like cows, like chickens, like rabbits, like foxes. There's quite a lot of them, so I actually think you can fill up a whole category. So summarizing cast, generally really good. I think there were some missed opportunities, but really nothing too big. Overall, I think four out of five llamas on this one. So now that we have our family, we move into the new world of Henford on Bagley. I'll start with the things I like, and then I'll continue with the things I don't like as much. First of all, this world is beautiful, it's lush, it's green, it has three diverse areas, it has a nice overgrown sort of woody area, it has some good countryside, it has a town centre. Um, there's some cute families in here that actually have some lore, they have relationships, um, there's some returning sims. Agnes Crumplebottom returns, a uh, small criticism in The Sims 1 and The Sims 2, she is actually Mortimer Goth's aunt, she's not in this version. I realise they maybe couldn't have fixed that in save files where you've already played, uh, but it's still something that I think is a bit of a shame. What I don't like about this world is the fact that we already have Windenburg. I know that a lot of you are going to say that Windenburg is different, it has different architecture, but if you really look at it, I think the countryside in Windenburg, that is British. I think we already have a British world and I didn't really need an entire new British world. I think for this pack this was kind of the obvious and I would have maybe thought Maybe go for Italy, Tuscany. If you have a farming pack in a Tuscany style, think of rolling hills, olive groves, getting your own eggs and actually making pasta with the whole family, fresh produce, fresh pesto, fresh basil, fresh cheese. I think there were a lot of options. I've just placed Don and Dina in one of the pre-made houses. I want to give a quick shout out to the game changers who actually built these houses, which means that all of the lots in this world are actually really nice. Um, and we are in this beautiful town center. But here is where my specific criticism of this world comes. This world, like a lot of recent worlds by The Sims, is mostly set dressing. I love this little square right here. I love that there's little market stores, but there's only one community lot that you can build here. If I want a little bookshop with my sim here, I have to bulldoze the pub. If I want a little bakery with my sim here, I need to bulldoze the pub. I just think that these here could have made room for some more lots. And people are praising EA for that you can now actually window shop. And honestly, I think it's a bit of a shame that these are just debug items that you can click on and your sim will stand in front of it and look at it. Maybe this is my overly critical thinking, but at heart, I'm a builder. So I don't thrive in these worlds that are like beautifully set dress and you kind of have to just build a house that fits into the style. I want to have a little bit more creativity and kind of think about how I want to design my things within this world. So about this world, some people are probably going to think that I'm being a little bit too harsh, but I'm going to give it two out of five llamas. I think it's really pretty, but I don't think it's terribly creative or out of the box. And I think there's just too much set dressing to really make your own thing in this world that I'm wondering how much I'm actually going to be using this world. On to build and buy. Now, I actually think there's a lot of good stuff, especially in the build section. Um, I think... The doors again really fit the theme, they really fit the world even though I don't like the world that much. Um, I think for the theme that they've chosen this all works really really well. I have a bit of an issue that sometimes the swatches don't completely match up so these two doors come in this nice little green but then there's no corresponding smaller doors in that same swatch. I like the windows in this pack, uh, there's some good sets, there's some good way to mix and match all of them. The windows are really truly British. Some great wall ivy in this pack, they even have some wisteria which I think is very well done um, and can really bring your cottage to that next level. One of the new features in this pack, thatched roofs that come in a variety of swatches. Um, they have a matching trim and I think some matching dormers as well, yep, you can even have specific dormers. And what I actually think is best about these thatch roofs is that you have these top decoration items uh, with which you can really just complete the look of your thatched cottage. Now buy mode. Yeah, I'm looking like this not because it's bad, but because it's not a whole lot. And I'm saying that, yeah, look at this, it's, it's not a terribly large amount. And with that, a lot of it is ivy and some of them are just lights at different heights. There's this lovely new bed, uh, there's a nice new chair, but then there's no sofa version of this and similar thing for this sofa. I think a lot of people really like the sofa and I do too. I just think 
First of all, it doesn't come in enough brown swatches. I really need some good brown leather swatches for this sofa. And second, how difficult would it have been to make a two-seater version of this? I've seen a lot of people complain about this, but I think especially for small cottages, a two-seater would have worked much, much better. And then the kitchen. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the kitchen and it really fits this type of pack to contain this type of kitchen, but didn't we just recently get a kit called Country Kitchen Kit? Now, I actually have to say I like this kitchen more than the Country Kitchen Kit kitchen. Uh, mostly because this one comes with some dark wood swatches that work a lot better in like older, darker houses. The other one comes in too many just bright colours with light woods for me. It seems a little redundant to have multiple country style kitchens. Um, what I do like in this one actually is this sort of more old fashioned fridge with like an ice drawer in it. And this Meg fridge, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Meg fridges, uh, but I will be using this in some of the houses that I make. Some good plants here. Um, I think they all look really good. Actually, the decorations are what I think are best in this pack. These small little things that you can put on the counter, they all come in good swatches that you can actually make them look somewhat modern as well. Uh, I think this one will look really, really great in a modern interior as well. And then specifically, this pot. Honestly, I would pay 40 quid for this pack just to have this pot. This is the type of pot that I want to put in every single designer kitchen that I make in this game. This pot is fantastic. I do want to give a little shout out as well to these fireplaces. They are large, but they're actually not too large and they fit in a lot of small cottages just because they're not that deep. And I think these were just really the type of fireplaces that we didn't have. So they're a really good addition to the game. Now, what everyone's probably been waiting for, the chicken coop and the animal shed. I'll start with the chicken coop. Um, I like this one a lot. I think it has great colors. I think it has a good dark swatch that it fits in with some older houses, but it has some nice, brighter, fun ones that it can fit into maybe even your modern build or your more contemporary builds. Um, I like the animations. You can actually see the chickens in here and sometimes they even come, come out up there. Um, I think this one's overall great. The chickens have quite a, quite a wide range where they can walk. Um, overall, this is a great item and I love this a lot. The shed, however, this is where all my issues start. First of all, this is pretty big, but that's fine. That's understandable. Second, why? Why this shed? I mean, I can probably guess that it's because of animations. They didn't want to animate the animals lying down or maybe even eating. I heard a suggestion the other day, which I actually think was a really good one, which is why didn't they attach the animals to a trough, which would really allow you to put down as many as you want and maybe create your own stables because there's a couple of issues with this particular shed, which is one, it doesn't work with a modern build, two, it will always kind of mismatch the outside walls of your house and the roof tiles, which I think is really, really annoying. And then third, it wouldn't mean that we have this huge black gaping hole. This just looks really, really bad. Overall, I'm really not happy with the animal shed. They should have invested a little bit more time in this, made it a little bit more versatile because I don't know how often I'll be using this just because it will look really, really ugly on my lot. Now, I will say a bit of saving grace for this build by review is the debug items. And I honestly do not understand why they didn't put more of these in the actual catalogue. This little plant thing, there's an open fence, which I know wouldn't be functional, but it just looks really, really good. So this bike, I want this bike actually to be functional. There is a bike, but it's not this one. And I think this one is actually really, really cute. So there's a lot of good stuff in here, actually including, let me try and find it because there should be, ah, found it. So there's a functioning water wheel, which in live mode actually starts turning. You can put this in a little pond and it will make it look like you have a little water mill kind of house. So it's, it's really a shame that they didn't include more of these in the actual catalogue. <laughs> All right, quick summary of build and buy. I think most items look really nice. I'm a little bit sad that a lot of it is hidden in debug or live edit. I think the shed looks terrible. I'm, I'm just going to say it. But on the other hand, the chicken coop is really, really nice. I'm missing some items here and there, but overall it's not bad. And I think there are a couple items in here that I'll be using a lot. So overall judgment, three and a half out of five llamas. On to gameplay. I've moved our friends into a little cottage in the Bramble Woods. So this is the foresty area. This is a starter home that actually already has the shed and the coop. Um, so I'll show you a little bit of how these things actually work. 
for either one of these you can just click on them and purchase animals um, when you purchase chickens you actually have a selection of colors as well as some chicks that you can buy you need to have both a hen and a rooster to have fertilized eggs and they will hatch in a couple days what's actually really fun about this chicken coop i've been playing with the chicken coop a lot because it's by far my favorite item what happens is that once in a while your chickens will lay special eggs these can be chocolate eggs uh, obsidian eggs there are actually the rainbow eggs and they can be used either in recipes but those also can be hatchable and they can actually give you special chickens so in my personal save game the other day, I actually had a hatchable obsidian egg and out of it came a devil chicken. This devil chicken has flaming eyes, but if you actually become friends with them, they can protect you from the Grim Reaper and have a lot of advantages. So I'm not going to spoil all the things that you can do with this chicken coop. I'm just letting you know that there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of different eggs onto the shed. Same situation, you can purchase animal, um, you can purchase a llama or a cow. Uh, llamas will give you wool, cows will give you milk, uh, in this case I'll just choose a cow. Um, you have to make sure to clean the shed, to feed the cow, you have to brush the cow as well, and then once every day he will give you milk. The milk of the cow will change also depending on treats, so you can get some special milk for some special recipes. Now the shed is only home to one animal, which means that you can't breed cows. Which I honestly think is a shame. How fun would it have been to breed like a golden cow and have like your little cow family and your lineage of cows? It just feels a lot less personal if you buy one cow, she dies, and then you buy a new one and she dies again. It's just not the same as having your nice little chicken family. Other than just cows and chickens, which you can have on your home road, there's actually a couple more animals roaming around the neighborhood, especially in the Bramblewood and in Old New Henford. So here, for example, we can see this little tree stalk um, and there's a lot of birds around this little tree stalk and Don can actually come over, talk about music, admire, you can even give them gifts and if they like done they might give gifts back similar situation with rabbits they actually live in these small little rabbit holes lastly there are foxes uh, foxes will only come to your lot if you have the wild foxes lot challenge turned on um, you can actually become friends with them and give them outfits as well as we are in this part of the world anyway there's sort of a hidden cottage here so in this cottage actually lives one of the npcs that comes with this town he is sort of an npc but he actually has a task so if you find him around, which focus the camera on the creature keeper, in this case, he's sitting there on a bench, we can actually hover over him and you can see that he is the creature keeper. And then once you've introduced yourself, um, there are some unique interactions like have a Henford heart to heart and you can buy animal clothing from him. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of animal clothing. I wasn't a big fan of animal clothing in The Sims Cats and Dogs either. He will have something else every single time that you show up. So if you do like this kind of stuff, make sure to check in. Around the world, there will be more of these NPCs like the Creature Keeper, uh, but I won't spoil too much of them. They all have unique interaction and some errands for you to solve. I quickly mentioned lot challenges just now when I was talking about foxes. Lot challenges are actually something new added to the game in an update recently. Um, so in this one, you can see this lot has wild foxes enabled. This means that these foxes are coming to your lot. Um, they also have simple living, which I was a little bit hesitant about in the beginning, I have to admit. I have done a couple hours of gameplay with simple living. It's really difficult in the beginning, but once you get this going, this is so much fun. It's really fun to unlock new recipes and gather some new ingredients. You really need a garden and some animals maybe to produce milk and to produce eggs. That's where I have a little bit of criticism. You can produce milk and actually if you have two milk you can produce cheese. But for a lot of recipes you need flour and there's no way to get flour other than just buying it from somewhere. I would have loved if we could just grow our own flour and mill it and then have it at home. Same with sugar. I know it's a little bit weird to have sugar just standing in your backyard in England but you can have plantains which I don't think usually grow in England either. Something else added to the game, there's actually these new vegetable patches that allow you to purchase oversized crop seeds and grow oversized crops. There are a couple of options, uh, there's five of them. I think the aubergines are probably my favorite. And as you've planted it, you actually see nine little humps of dirt. Now, if you take good care of these, they might eventually turn into one and then you get a really big crop. The real big crops are worth a lot and can actually do really well on fairs. So fairs are the next big thing. In the base game update, they've actually brought the calendar into the base game. So now you can see every Saturday there is a nice fair and every Saturday there's a different fair. So this week there's a chicken fair, next week there's a garden fair, the week after there's a cow fair and lastly there's the oversized crop fairs. Which means that every week you can bring something else to the table. 
I personally really like festivals. I've liked festivals from City Living. They bring some variety in what I do with my Sims. That's why I like seasons a lot. I do actually like holidays and I usually play with the holidays. I just like for my Sims to have a reason to leave their home lot. There's also a new option when you click on the fridge and it's actually canning. Uh, so this goes together with the cooking skill. There's not a separate skill for this, but it allows you to make canned preservatives from any of the vegetables or fruits that you have in your garden. Now, I know that this is quite simple, but especially with the simple living trait, this comes back in a lot of recipes, which I think they actually did quite nice to sort of interlace this, that you need quite a few of these to like make treats or make special pies. So I kind of appreciate that you sort of have to do the step-by-step -step thing of first making your raspberry jam and then making your raspberry pie. It all worked out really nicely. There's two last things when it comes to gameplay that I want to talk about. There's a little picnic basket. Um, you can put anything that you make yourself or take out of the fridge in here. So you can bring your milk, you can bring your crumpets because there's new recipes in this pack as well. So you can bring your crumpets, your buttered crumpets, your raspberry jam crumpets in this basket and then set it up to eat somewhere in the world with your friends or your family. I think this is a nice addition. It's small, but it really just adds a little bit of gameplay character. And then there's this cross stitch basket. I don't have an issue with cross stitching. I just have an issue that we've quite recently had a knitting pack and I think it maybe should have been in that pack. So about the gameplay, I have to admit, I was a little bit skeptical when I first saw this trailer, but now that I've played it, I actually like it a lot. I think the cow or the llama, which should have sort of been the showstopper in this pack, really isn't the item that I like most. I like the chickens, I like the canning, I like the simple living lot trait a lot more than I like the cows or the llamas. Just because you can have one, there's limited interactions and you can't really breed them or make a family with them. So it feels a little bit less personal. And then obviously by now you know how much I hate that shed. They've put attention in some things here and there, like the NPCs, which I think is fun to do once, but I don't know how often I'll actually be doing the errands for the NPC or doing the unique interactions. It is a little bit better than Cass, so I will actually give it four and a half out of five llamas. That brings us to three and a half out of five llamas. That is not a terrible lot, but I did really enjoy this pack. I think its main shortcomings for me are the world and that this should just be a little bit more when it comes to build by and especially the interactions with the cows and the llamas. I think they were a bit lackluster and restrictive. Overall, this is a fun pack. If it was expansion pack level, probably with the amount of effort they've put in the gameplay, um, I see how from their side, this is an expansion pack level project. In reality, what it feels like you get, I'm not always 100% sure. So there you have my opinions on the first pack. If you have made it this far, thank you so much for watching my first YouTube video and I hope to see you at the next one. Bye bye.